Hello! I've just arrived in the Holy Land during the Middle Ages. At least Napoleon isn't here with his armies. Or his feeties. <laughs> Don't think I'll get much peace and quiet, though. No. The Crusades are in full swing, with Europe trying to reconquer the Holy Land, which has been lost to Muslim forces. But the Crusaders have more than met their match. Now they've come up against the Muslim leader, Saladin. When it comes to fighting in the desert, no one is smarter. This guy is Saladin Credible. The Crusaders are headed for Jerusalem, but we can deal with them here by the horns of Hatin. Kill them! Kill them all! Patience, patience, my friends. We must be cleverer than that. We can attack them in a different way. We're in a desert. So ask yourself, what do they need? A good kicking. No, no, no. A sword through their skull. Kill them all! Kill them all. No, 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 no. Think about it. Think about it. What must they do every day in the desert? Huh? Here. Kiss a chipmunk? No, 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 not that. Put it this way, what must we all do? What must we all do every day to survive? Go toilet? Other end, other end. Brush their teeth. What is this? What is in this? Jug, jug. Water, water! Oh. Water! I totally drink water every day. So, what must we do? Kill it! Kill it! No, no, no! Go back to the water. Think water. Drown them! Drown them all! How, how am I supposed to drown them? In the paddling pool I keep on my camel? You can drown in as little as one inch of water. Fuck! Oh, thanks for that! That's really helpful! What happens in the desert if you don't drink your water? They have nothing to wash their uh, Saladin. Saladin! <laughs> it's called it's, Saladin! It's, 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 it's Saladin. What happens in a desert if you do not drink the water? They get thirsty? Yes! Oh. And what happens if you still don't drink the water? You get the bad skin, no, chappy it's... lips. No, past that stage, OK? What happens next? You die. Yes! yes! Boom! One point to idiot number two. Well done! Where do they need to go to get their water? Begins with a W, ends in an L. Wall. Rhymes with bell. Cello. Where? Where is when it? Do when? Do when? Well! Yeah! Well! Well! well. Ah so we go to the well, we block their access, they cannot drink any water, they get weaker and weaker until they can barely stand, they're about to die, and then we can finally... Ah, kill them all! Kill them all! To the well! Kill them all. Wait, 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 can we just run through it one more time? <laughs> we go to the well. The well is this way. When the Romans were at war, they sometimes used slaves to row their warships, which were called galleys. Imagine what the conditions in that job must have been like. Good afternoon. Can I have your attention, please? I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you slaves aboard this Roman galley destined for Carthage. And I'd just like to go through a few safety procedures. Please ensure your chains are fastened at all times throughout the journey. They do up like so and should be tightened until they are extremely painful. Lovely. In the very likely event of an emergency and we are rammed by an enemy ship, the emergency exits are here, here and here. But they are just for us Romans. And to help speed up our evacuation, please ensure that all your possessions have already been stolen by the Roman army. And as the ship sinks slowly beneath the waves, please tug desperately at your chains like so. Help! Help! It just remains for me to thank you for choosing to travel with the Roman Navy. Not that you had any choice. And I hope you have a very enjoyable voyage. Excuse me, miss. What? Well, where's the toilets? We'll just go where you're sitting. At least there's no cues, eh, mate? <laughs> <sighs> Less chat and more rowing, yes? Time for some Aztec priests to change the mood. So let's see you get on down at the Disc Aztec. Red, we're not nice. At an Aztec temple, so 
opening day We priests would please our gods this way Hearts of enemies we'd slay Mass sacrifice To win at war, make crops grow more To cure our kids when ill The sun to shine, this song to rhyme More victims we must kill You won't survive, you won't survive Our gods each powerful big cheese Let's hear it for your favorites, please oh, We're doing it for Tony The Aztec goddess of the Earth's heart We're doing it for Chantico Goddess who makes volcanoes stop We're doing it for Rinsley The goddess of stone knives We're doing it for Rich Pablo Or me totally Chico 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 Chico. Uh, Some of the gods' great lives <laughs> Aztecs, we advise ya ha, 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 ha. Or you'll end up as fertilizer yeah. Our year starts in November When every priestly member Is asked if they'll remember How Aztec did We do this if you haven't guessed By getting something off your chest Your heart would probably be best Or else your head And then on our year planners It's the raising of the banners Dismembering methods fairy All you need to know is that we pile them high May and June, it's summertime The killing is easy It's only halfway through the year Bet you're feeling queasy In autumn time we sweep our homes And kill some more, but then By late October the killing's over Then it starts up again You won't survive, you won't survive Until you're old <laughs> Avoid us priests, you've been told In 1620, it was the turn of the Pilgrim Fathers to settle in America With the Pilgrim Fathers, you may have heard rather A lot about our notion Crossing the ocean on the good ship Mayflower Though it's true, our journey turned into quite a commotion. People report that we sported these hats, but that's not true. I mean, would you? Anyway, the main thing to say, we began the USA, a little band of religion fans from the East Midlands. We all believe slowly that England was becoming less holy, so set off for Holland, cause there we had friends. But in the end, seemed the Netherlands would never be the land we planned. Couldn't stand to remain on that terrain, so again we rearranged to start a new nation with our congregation. A new and calmer life took a farmer and a builder and his wife and a clerica to find America. And we saw plenty of land We thanked God when we found ground A Cape Cod, but it didn't go as planned Couldn't land on the sand A month later, though, we made it New Plymouth, man, we claimed it The natives said not, but ran when we shot Moved there, it proved, yeah, that life would be tough Cause we didn't have enough of the right stuff Did you know, had no seeds we could grow Although William Mullins had stacked 126 pairs of shoes in his pack Now that's whack A fishing rod, a plow, pig or a cow Would have been a much better idea But now there's no food for us to eat Does this mean that we'll meet With defeat? No fun in the new world I'm glad we've arrived here But will we survive here? Yeah, in the new People world People were starving, our numbers halving When the winter winds blew wasn't pretty in our new city, but the natives took pity, even though they didn't have to. Man called Squanto showed us how to grow maize, catch eel for a meal, build shelter in the bays. Tribe gave us a feast, our starvation ceased. In 1621, what they had done turned us back from the dead to the living. And to this day, that's why we have Thanksgiving. In Massachusetts. Let's call this New Hampshire. Way I'm from Newcastle, 
Can we call it new new castle? Nah. It's a new world. Horrible Histories presents Sensational Shakespeare. Shakespeare died in 1616, aged only 52. But he had changed the English language forever, and even today, 400 years later, we're still using his words and enjoying his plays all over the world. Top work, Mr S. You really are the greatest. He's left us with over 150 poems, 38 plays like Hamlet, Macbeth and... Look, you know what? He can tell you himself. And a one, a two, a one, two, three, four... to the Savage Songs special, which has given me a brilliant idea. All I've got to do is write a catchy song and I'll be as famous as the great Greek leader, Alexander the Great. Alexander is my name, Macedonia's most famous commander. History calls the great, but I prefer the greatest. A king aged only 20 when my dad assassinated. Advisors called for calm, but frankly, peace is overrated. Crushed rebels in Greek city states. So thousands of the martyrs made short labor of my neighbors. And that was just for starters. Alexander. Started with dad's enemy, the famous Persian nation. Ruler Darius had far more troops and inconvenience. But I want them thrashed Egypt, I'm a military genius. Founded Egypt's Alexandria, named for the greatest man alive. I was now Pharaoh and king of Persia, not bad for 25. Alexander, victorious fight. Said they wouldn't follow me Guitar solo, Ptolemy Cut 
Because of me, Ptolemy, he'll go far. He'll found the dynasty that ends with Cleopatra. Then there's Hephaestion, my best friend, of course. Unless you count Persepolis, but he's a horse. Why the long face, my friend? Anyway, together it was going grand. Till heaven Boosie died and my men took a stand. I wanted to continue, but my hands were tied, so I sat in my tent and I cried. <laughs> Know that when Henry VIII had Anne Boleyn executed, he brought a specially trained swordsman over from France. Because an axe, well, that could be blunt and messy, but a sword, ha, well, that could cut off her head in one clean slat. <laughs> oh, do you know, Henry, he was a lovely man after all. <laughs> yeah, right. Divorce beheaded and died. Divorce beheaded survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives Some might say I ruined their lives <clears throat> Catherine of Aragon was one She failed to give me a son I had to ask her for a divorce That broke up her heart, of course Young Anne Boleyn, she was two Had a daughter the best she could do I said she flirted with some other man And off with the chop went dear Anne Lovely Jane Seymour was three, the love of a lifetime for me. She gave me a son, little Prince Ed. Then poor old Jane went and dropped dead. Divorced, beheaded and died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. Some might say I ruined their lives. Anne of Cleves came at four. I fell for the portrait I saw. Then laid eyes on her face and cried, she's a horse. I must have another divorce. Catherine Howard was five, a child of 19, so alive. She flirted with others, no way to behave. The axe sent young Kath to her grave. Catherine Pa, she was last. By then all my best days were past. I lay on my deathbed age just 55. Lucky Catherine the last stayed alive. I mean, how unfair. Ah! Divorce, beheaded and died. Divorce, beheaded, survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. You could say I ruined their lives. <laughs> 800 years old. That's nearly as old as my gran. King John continued to fight his barons until he died in 1216, just one year after Magna Carta. The barons forgot about Prince Louis and John's son, Henry, became King Henry III. Poor Johnny Boy is now remembered for being a rubbish king and for a document he completely ignored. I wonder what he would make of all that. Chatty death, chatty death, my grizzly. Yeah, they wouldn't even pay for a new tune. Yeah, same tune, different words. What? Oh, yeah. Hello, and welcome back to Chatty Death, where it's time for our special guest, please go absolutely bonkers for the former King of England, King John! <laughs> That's going bonkers, is it? So, Johnny Bobs, Johnny, 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 Johnny Bobs! <laughs> A King of England, eh? How did you die? In battle? An assassin's blade? Let's get to the bottom of this. Bad tummy. I had dysentery from eating too many peaches. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yes, that's me. Sorry. Well, we got to the bottom of it, all right. <laughs> you! <coughs> now, there is one thing people like about you. You gave us Magna Carta. 
Magnum what, what? You know, big bit of paper. You signed it to limit your powers and give rights to the barons. People still remember that? Well, yeah, it sort of became the foundation of democracy. No, that was nothing. I, I just signed it to keep the barons quiet for a few weeks. I I've kept more important pieces of paper next to my toilet. Yeah, well, this toilet paper is the basis of the Constitution of America. Sorry, what, what's, what's an America? You know, cowboys, skyscrapers, hot dogs. Al Pacino! Hoo-ha! Al Pacino! What do you got? What? No? <sighs> Take too long to explain. I can't believe I was so unpopular. But please tell me my brother Richard is hated even more. Uh, Richard the Lionheart? Yeah. Chivalrous hero of the Crusades. I don't believe it. He hardly spent a day in the country and bankrupted us with his taxes. Why am I the villain? Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> mm. That was getting orcs. <laughs> oh, you like my Al Pacino, did you? Yeah, I do others. Use the force, Luke. Chatty death, chatty death. Hope next time it's not you. As we'll see, when you're top of the tree, not everyone likes you. Take Crooked King John in 1215. He was a truly rotten ruler who annoyed his people so much they rebelled against him and forced him to agree to a list of their demands called Magna Carta. And Johnny Boy was not happy about that one bit. Your Majesty, we, the noblemen of England, are worried about your continued abuse of power. It threatens the future of the realm. So we've gathered here at Runnymede, and we've written a list of grievances in this document here called the Magna Carta. Yeah. Really ticked off, actually. Really yeah, ticked yeah. off. Big time. Magnum Cartos, whatever. Got some grievances of my own, actually. I think you'll find our grievances are more serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you find mine now. I don't think you will, actually. I think I will, actually. I don't think you will, actually. There's only one way to settle this. I propose a grievance battle. Oh. Baron, hit it! What, what, where to start? Which part? We got so many grievances, we could fill a cart. Let's start with some facts. Like tax, they're so heavy that they're gonna break our backs. We can't pay, there's no chance. We lost all our money when you lost France. The northern bit, anyway. Your Majesty, you got pwned. Drop some beats, player. I'm confused. Is this real? I thought I was the king. I'm holding his seal. Kneel to the king, I'll see you grovel in the grime. I'll tax what I like, I'll even tax this rhyme. Barons don't grovel, it's time to get real. Listen to me, dog, or you're gonna feel some steel. This chart is tight. We don't need to fight. Just hit it with your seal and give us our rights. Some serious points. I ain't finished. We want a council to represent which people. We want a free church with a free steeple. We want you to stop stealing our sons and holding them hostage like you have done. There's vital stuff here that you gotta give us. There's also some stuff about fishing in the rivers. So stop! Read what we plead, agree the deed in running need. Do what we ask or we're gonna make you bleed! <sighs> yeah, to hear what you're saying, if I don't tread gently for my life I will be playing, so tell me what to do. You're the boss. They will have to do this later because I'm taking up the cross. Interesting development. I wonder... Uh, shut up. Hang on a minute! You must think we're barmy. While you're talking here, you're hiring up an army. So how about this? Let's barter. We'll, we'll stay loyal if you agree, agree to Magna Carta. Oh! Whatever, dog, I'll agree, you skanky scroll. I'm tired of this game and it's time for me to roll. I ain't bothered, it don't fill me with sorrow. No one will even remember this tomorrow. Plus, I'm messes with the Pope and he'll ignore this ting. I do things my way, cos I'm John and I'm the King. Oh! Oh! Man, this King is fat. Harsh. Shakespeare's early life is a bit of a mystery. We hardly know anything about him until he moved from Stratford-upon-Avon to London to make his name in the theatre. And theatre was huge in Tudor times. It had to be. There wasn't any telly. Oh, imagine that. No telly. <laughs> All the actors and playwrights were like mega-famous celebs. Yeah, they behaved that badly. Hey. <laughs> ah, it all got a bit fruity backstage. The bounder came at me with a loot. So I put him down with a perfect witty response. Oh, what was that, Spencer? I decked him. Excuse me. Uh, is this where all the theatre stars hang out? Fanboy alert. Should I give him an autograph or kill him? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Lad, you are addressing the greatest theatrical stars of the age. Ben Johnson, actor and writer. Kit Marlowe, play... <sighs> Where's he gone? 
<laughs> Surprise! Master of Disguise. And this is Gabriel Spencer. He's just an actor, but we let him hang out with us because he likes drinking and fighting. He also does a good line of literary criticism. This wine is literally disgusting. <laughs> okay, well, I, I might come back later when, you, when you're less busy and um, drunk. <laughs> That'll be never. What do you want, Spud? Well, actually, I was looking for some advice. Basically, uh, at the moment, I'm mainly like an actor, but like I'm looking to get more into writing, and like I mainly specialize in playing old man parts at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> old man parts! <laughs> Very funny. Um, my name is William Shakespeare. Set square? No, uh, Shakespeare. Shark beer? Shakespeare. Shake and vac? Shakespeare. Snack pot? That literally sounds nothing like Shakespeare. Well, anyway, I write plays. <laughs> Listen up, skateboard. Writing plays is a rocky mistake. Real writers drink and fight and go to prison. Well, I have a wife and kids, so I have to earn a living. Unlike some people. Anyway, I'm pretty good at writing plays. A lot of buzz around me. <laughs> Look at me! I'm Billy Springle Spangle. And I write plays. And I plan for the future. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know who that's supposed to be. It's you! Look, look I'm not good at impressions, all right? But I am good at fighting. <laughs> Consider yourself taunted outside! Listen, buddy, I'm a writer, not a fighter. And I'm going all the way to the top without you guys. Everyone will know my name. William Starscream. Should have seen that coming. Good for you, Shakespeare. Top bloke. <coughs> Nerd. I heard that. Anywho, <laughs> King William II was succeeded by his brother, Henry I, and his death could only be described as, well, stupid. Stupid deaths, stupid deaths, they're funny cause they're true! Woo! Stupid deaths, stupid deaths, hope next time it's not you! <laughs> oh, I blinked! You know, there's just no beating him in a staring contest. How does he do it? How do you... Oh, next! And your name is... Henry the First, King of England. Oh, sorry. Well, Henry, you seem to have a little problem. Anything you'd like to divulge? Yes, I'll tell you my story, but I'm going to have to be quick. Yes, please. I was visiting my grandchildren in Normandy, and I had a lovely meal of my favourite dish, lamprey. Lamprey? Yes, it's a kind of eel. Well, nice. Oh, yes, yes, they are nice. That's mm. good. Carry on. My doctor had advised me, don't eat so many lampreys, they're bad for you, but I just love them so much, and I scoffed and scoffed and I scoffed and... Um, 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 um. And I had so many that I got a real pain in my gut. Did the eels make you feel eel? <laughs> Do you get it? Eel, ill. I'm saying ill. Eel, yes, Ill. I get Ill. it. Ill. Oh, it's just you didn't laugh, so I thought no. you didn't hear it. No. Okay, carry on. Well, my doctor advised me to take a laxative. He said it would give me diarrhoea for a day, but it would clear out my bowels. Mm, charming. Yes, and clear out my bowels, it certainly did. I just kept on pooing and pooing and pooing. Yes. Until I died. <laughs> Hey, you could say you were dying to go to the toilet. <laughs> oh, I'd leave it five minutes if I were you. It smells like someone's died in there. Oh, they have. You. <laughs> Can I go now? I'll just confer with the judges. Mm, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, oh, mm, yeah. oh, I completely agree. No, no, I really need to go now. Well, Henry, congratulations. You're through to the afterlife. Thank you. Gangway! Phew-wee. You sure one of those wasn't you? Mm. You? Oh, how could you? Face of an angel. Oh, next! Stupid death, stupid death. Hope next time it's not you. <laughs> Charles II was all in favour of getting actresses on the stage. Yes, good old Charles. He certainly knew how to entertain people. Well, do tuck in, Mr. Ambassador. Are you not going to say grace first? Yeah. Party on. Amen. Big time. Mm. Shouldn't we wait for your other guests to sit down first? Other guests? Yeah. Oh, them! 
No, 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 they're not guests. You see, the common man, no offense, is allowed to come and watch me, their fabulous king, eat his dindins on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's a sort of public performance. Well, maybe I come back Tuesday or the Thursday. No, 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 no. You don't mind, do you? See? Now tuck in, old boy. How is Italy at this time of year? Well, the area down south is very nice. Uh, problem? I think they are moving closer. I sincerely doubt it. Now, you were saying about the beaches. Yes, the area of Calabria, well, it is... No, I'm sure they are moving closer. There's a rope. Maybe they are moving the rope closer. <laughs> you and your impossible theory. Now, come on, old sausage. Tell me all about Calabria. Yes, well, it is a very small region, and uh, no, they're definitely moving closer. OK, there's only one way to sort this out. Are you lot moving any closer? See? Now I'll have no more of these groundless accusations that the... This is ridiculous. Oh, no, 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 don't go. You know I hate eating alone. Party for one, Charlie. Looks that way, old boy. Looks that way. Savage songs. Yo, 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 MC Mouse is in the house. Well, actually, I'm a rat. But MC Rat in the flat sounds a bit rubbish, really. Anyhow, time to get this song special started. So let's rock back to the Stone Age. Not that this is a rock song, it's actually jazz. I'm sure you've heard the Stone Age occurred for two and a half million years. But there's more of Stone Age to engage than maybe it first appears. Dinosaurs, Neanderthals, let's make this clearer. Didn't live together, came from different eras. That's not all I can tell you, so much more to be known about the many phases in the ages of stone. Shooby dooby doo wop, it's all the rage. To skiddly bop do I brush up on your stone age? Oh yeah, all right. It's fine to define the near paleolithic, but you're gonna have to be a little more specific. Do you mean lower? When ancient beings first used tools, or middle paleolithic when they had the that's when Homo sapiens starts to emerge But just in Africa, it's long before the global surge Not till Upper Paleolithic, 40,000 years ago Did Neanderthal and Homo sapiens say hello Neanderthal and Homo sapiens Living in caveman harmony Language was invented, cave painting art Then Paleolithic ended, which meant the start of phase two Be doo be doo up, turn a new page Skimly bop doo wah, mug up on the stone age, oh yeah Followed by the era Mesolithic, then Neanderthals are wiped out by the Ice Age, horrific. After which the Neolithic Age was terrific. Man learned to farm, build homes so they could settle. Then some other folks turned up and they discovered metal. Beaker men from Europe had found bronze and outgrown the simple and traditional ways of stone. Bronze Age was invented, by now man was flying. Cause hot on its heels came the Age of Iron. Oh.